everyone, it's Samantha, and today's video is going to be really random. I feel like I'm a hot mess today, but I really wanted to get this video filmed. This is going to just be a planner update, planner chaos video. I do have a couple of planner reviews coming up for you guys very soon. I'm going to show you guys what I'm using currently, and I went planner nuts, bought quite a few new planners. I have some other planners. It's just way too many planners. I'm just trying out new things and trying to find something that's going to work a little better for me. I am getting planner burnout. So this is my planner. This is a plum paper planner with a Lime Life planner cover. So the cover actually sticks up just slightly. It's got one extra spot for a ring, but it actually ends up fitting really nicely. Other than that, it lines up with the coil really nicely. And I've been using this for most of the year. I used the Simplified Planner for, I don't know, maybe a month or so. But I went back to my plum paper planner, and while I really like this planner, I don't know, I'm just bored with it at this point, and this is such a first world problems thing. Uh, my planner works great, it's beautiful, the paper's nice. I am just in the market for something new and something different. I definitely want to spice up my planner life. I ended up getting a bunch of different stuff at Michael's and then I found something else at Target. So I had been actually looking at A5 size, like Filofax style with the rings, um, but I just haven't pulled the trigger on anything like that. I really like the simple stories. Uh, planners. I also like the Webster's Pages planners, so I was really debating between those two, maybe getting one of each. I really like the A5 size, which is the bigger size for those planners. But then I saw that Michael's was doing a personal size planner. So I went to Michael's and I ended up getting three of these smaller sizes. These are the personal size, so they are a bit smaller, but they were 30% off. They had a 30% off coupon last week. So I ended up getting three different colors and quite a few little inserts. So I will be doing a separate complete haul video of this, walking through the whole system that I picked up. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep all three of these. I may just hold on to them because they were super cheap. Um, and I may still get the A5 size too. Like I am going full on planner addiction here. Planner hoarding, not even addiction, just flat out hoarding planners at this point. But I just needed a change. So I really love the, the binder system. I think it was last year that I tried out some Filofaxes and I didn't get the ones that had the band like this. I got them with an elastic across them and I ended up selling those. I just didn't really like them, but I'm hoping that like with the button strap, I like them a little bit better. So I'm gonna give these an honest try. My problem that I'm having these days is I can't keep all my blogging stuff, my to-do list stuff, my family appointments and all that stuff, my meal planning stuff, my budgeting stuff, all in the same planner. Then I end up carrying this stupid planner around with me all over the house and it's just not convenient. It's not convenient for me to haul it upstairs when I want a scrapbook so I can write down supplies and stuff or write down projects into my schedule. So it's just not working for me having one planner. So I am going to be dividing out my planner stuff to probably split it up into two planners. Uh, but anyway, that was my Michael stuff. I ended up splitting it up further and getting a budget book. I had been using one of the Lime Life Planner notebooks, but this one just caught my eye and they have this like larger style binding system. It's got the four rings at Michael's. So I ended up picking up one of their little notebooks, which is just called Budget. And I really liked this one because it had um, a page like at the beginning of the month type of stuff. And it's also just an expense tracker. So I just really liked this. I'm going to just keep this on our desk and this one I think was $3.99, 30% off of that. So it was really, really cheap. Um, I really liked this one. So I'm gonna start using this one starting in June. I'm not sure when you guys are gonna see this video, but I'm filming it right before June. So I'm really excited to write in this one starting this next month. And then the other planner I've been completely eyeing, because you guys know I've been getting into planner stamping. I've done a, quite a few planner stamping videos. I got lots of planner stamps. And that's one of the reasons that the Plum paper planner is just not working for me is because of the lines and I always thought I was going to love the lines. I really like the lines for writing but then it messes up my planner stamping. So I ended up getting a happy planner. I'll probably alternate which ones I use but this one is set up 
in like three sections. I hope you can see that. There's three little sections. So there's plenty of room for stamping. You can do a little stamp checklist. I've got lots of stamps that have the little check boxes like down in a line and they don't line up with the Plum Paper Planner lines. So I do need an unlined one for that. I was not interested in Erin Condren. I don't like Erin Condren's paper, um, but I thought this one was neat. I had used one of the ARC systems. It's the same kind of like disc system like this. And I had loved the idea of the system, but in practice, I had trouble with the ARC's um, cover. It was really, really thick. And this one's like the best of both worlds here because you have the, you know, the disc bound, you can remove pages like they just pop right off of this system. Like this is the little cover thing. But what I thought was awesome about the Happy Planner is it has the laminated covers. So it's really nice and easy to flip the cover open and close. Whereas I found with the ARC cover, it was this really thick leather chunky piece and it just did not flip like these are flipping. So when I saw these up close and personal, I knew I really wanted one. I also really like this was an 18 month planner. So if I do end up sticking with this one, it could be my planner all next year. So then I went to Target and they had a whole end cap of day designers. So I ended up picking one of these up too. And this was 10 bucks. This is an academic calendar. So it runs July through June of next year. This would be something also that I would alternate with my plum paper planner. And I really liked the layout of this particular one. It's got the three to-do list items, the daily schedule, and then a section called tonight. You could do whatever you want with that section. And I just really, really like having the scheduled part. And I feel like this one can be my day-to-day, -day, like mommy schedule, what we're actually doing that day. And there's not much extra room in this one to do uh, my scrapbooking stuff in here. But I thought this one would be great just for my family stuff. And they do have the month at a glance. Um, let's see. The month at a glance, it has lines. So it can be my meal planner. I could do a, my meal plan on this one, do my day to day schedule on the week pages. And then this one would be super duper simple. I can pack this in my bag with me. It's got a section for notes, so I can take notes at doctor's appointments or whatever kind of thing where we're, where we're out and about. So I really like that this one's small and lightweight and it can just stay on the desk or stay near the computer when I'm making appointments or whatever. So I definitely feel like this one is a bigger, chunkier planner. But other than that, like I picked out smaller size things. So these are both small. As you can see, um, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas for each planner and I definitely have to narrow it down to just one or two. I might just end up keeping one of these at my scrapbook desk and drawing down notes and supply lists. But I already ended up buying a few planners this year. So I have the plum paper planner from earlier that I've been using most of the year. I also ended up buying a Lime Life planner, which I took the cover off of. It's on my plum paper planner right now. But this is the Lime Life planner and I never really ended up using this one very much. I used it for, I don't know, like two weeks. But I found it really, really limiting. So here's like what I did for one of my weeks. I found it really limiting because it's a, it's an hourly schedule and nothing else, like nothing else. I found that the spaces just weren't big enough for me either. So you have this huge section where there's a blank part, then it gives you the hours. And then when you go to the next page, the Wednesday column is super duper skinny because it's got the binding right next to it. And so when you flip the page, like I like to do, I like to flip the page and just use this page, not have it open on two pages. I found I don't have the hours. So there's no hours here. They're only on this one side. So I really would have liked if they had carried the hours over on this side or, you know, spread it out a little better that you're not left with this big, huge wasted space. So the layout of this one just totally doesn't work for me. Having only hourly is really tough for me. And then the spacing was just off. And without the numbers on the one side, it was really hard for me to use. So this one was totally out. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one at this point, but it's really unusable for me. Aside from like the note paper, I could totally use this as notebook paper in the back. It's got a huge section of note paper and they're really pretty. So I definitely could use that for some note taking or journaling of some sort. 
but I'm also a really big fan of these monthly spreads, so I could definitely repurpose these and use them for something along the way, like I showed in a, a recent editorial calendar hack. I took the monthly spreads out of my Erin Condren to use for something else. So I could definitely could uh, get away with using that at some point, but it's just not going to work for me. The other one that I got, I got this one, I don't know, February or March, is the Simplified Planner, and I really like certain things about this one, and then I don't like certain things about this one. So for one, I do like this kind of coil with a thicker um, cover, and one of the ones that's similar to this is the Inkwell Press Planner. It's got the similar like style cover that's really nice and thick and chunky um, with this kind of coil. And I just found this one, I don't know, it just, the coil seems too big. It flips really well, but I really have a problem with these kind of tabs. Like the tabs are kind of cheap. The paper is super duper cheap. So I'm not a fan of the paper in this one at all. I've heard that they might have gotten a new paper for these coming up. So I don't know if the next year's will be any better. I did end up using this for at least a month, um, but I really love the layout of this one. I just found that, um, I don't know, it's just not going to work for me long term. It's got the um, to-do list section and the hourly section, which I really liked, but not having my full week easily seen did make it a little bit challenging for me. So I couldn't see but two pages at a time. So I really didn't find it really helpful. It was really hard to like find the page I was looking for if I was trying to write down an appointment. I couldn't just flip a week or two and write it down. I had to flip like a lot of pages and find the exact page. And the paper is super thin, so it is really hard to like find the exact page you're looking for. So I found this one really hard to use in practice. But I just, I don't know, I really liked it. I really liked the layout of the pages. So I think um, that this day designer one, let's show you again, with the schedule and the tiny to-do list and the section on the bottom is really gonna work out for me because it is structured with the hourly schedule so I can plan a couple of things here and there. It also has the little to-do list. And I thought also with this one, Something I liked about it is the weekends are just lines. So I could definitely just take up the weekend spots and make like a running weekly to-do list or something because I don't have a really long to-do list every day. So I think that this one will really work for me. It's just really simple. It's already structured out. One of my problems with the Plum Paper Planner is it is just so big and I don't end up using a whole bunch of it. Some days I don't write anything hardly down except like one or two to-do list things. This is the current week, so we're still working on the rest of the week, but it's just mainly a to-do list. It's hard for me to put the to-do list with my like other things that are going on that day. So it's really hard for me to keep it organized because it is just a straight down line. I haven't really liked the checklist section being at the bottom. If I was going to use this as my to-do list, like my three main things, I would really want it at the top of my page. So having it at the very bottom, I totally forget about that section. Um, so I don't know, it's just, I'm not super in love with it right now. I've been using the Plum Paper Planner pretty much nonstop for a year and a half. I had this all of last year. So I'm just getting bored with it. I need something else. And so I'm just in planner transition. As you can see, I bought like one of everything. <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure where I'm going in my planning. But now I definitely have a lot of options. So I just wanted to talk about what I've liked and what I've not liked about the planners that I do have. I wanted to show you guys the new ones that I'm considering. I have also thought about getting an Inkwell Press planner because I do really like their there are columns that they have. It's a lined thing with some different sections at the bottom. And I really do like their system. So that's another one I'm thinking about. I think in the planner community, it's called your unicorn planner, like your perfect planner. And people are always on the lookout for their absolute perfect system. Well, I am, I'm totally, you know, not 100% in love with any planner yet. It doesn't fit all of my needs. And while I love like the flexibility of the binding of these, I just, as a lefty, it is really hard for me to like write in these. I can't fold it over like I really like about my plum paper planner is I just fold over the page and, you know, have one page open at a time a lot of the time. So it's definitely something you can't do with these at all. And so the binders and the way if I'm trying to write on this this page, 
my hand is here and I'm bumping into the binding. And so, I don't know. I don't know if it's really gonna work for me. But I definitely love the flexibility that these kind of coils will provide because you can flip it all the way around. It is a little bit harder than with just like a spiral binding, but it will still actually work. So, I don't know. I haven't yet found my absolute perfect planner that I'm 100% happy with. So I just wanted to show you guys my planner hoard and talk about it all. <laughs> so yeah, this is a really a rambly, random video, but I feel like I got a lot off my chest that I wanted to say about planning. So I'm really glad I sat down and just made this video for you guys, showed you guys my planner crazies, and just chit-chatted a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found something in this video helpful and please let me know down below which planner you use and let me know how it's working for you because I'm still kind of on the lookout for what perfect planner I'm going to be using. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you like planner videos and be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.